What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be doing the match preview for Rayo Vallecano versus Barcelona in La Liga. Just 48 hours later, I heard that big win against Athletic Club at the Montjuic. We are already back in league action. The games now are coming thick and fast ahead of the September international break and it's another tough away trip in the stadium where Barcelona have not won there in the past three years. Difficult task for Flick and the players to go pick up three out of three points and make it nine out of nine points in the league to start off this new campaign. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. And also, if you're new, make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 9.30 p.m. local time. So half an hour later than the usual kickoff time. So it's going to be a late one. And this match will be taking place at the Estadi de Vallecos where we have struggled over the past few years. I think it was two draws or one draw and two losses. Of course, in the stadium where Komen ended up getting sacked on the plane back to Barcelona. The trips there recently have not been the greatest but hopefully we can break that curse this year and the referee for this match has also been confirmed as the second worst referee in the league but he was voted the referee of the year last uh, season it is Cesar Soto Grande where I, I don't even think we've won a game with him last season he's not bad and on the VAR it is Jorge Vasquez Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona are currently sat in second place in La Liga on six points. After playing two matches, we have two wins. Only Barcelona and Celta Vigo have won their first two matches of the year. Of course, Celta Vigo have a better goal difference than up. That's why they're top of the table because they won 3 1 when we only won 2 1. So that extra goal puts them top of the league. You have Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid winning their games, of course, in the last uh, match day. But they, of course, drew their first game. So they're on set on four points. And so is our opponent, Real Vallecano. They also have one win and one draw to start off the league campaign. But again, two points is two points not the end of the world we could draw against Viacano they could both win we're back to even squares so it's not, not you know, a gap to uh you know hold your head hand up and you know praise but you know what when we hit you know uh March and April and you're two points ahead in the league table that's of course when it'll make a big difference but nonetheless great start for Barcelona the first time we've won two games off the, in the first two games in uh in a very very long time I don't think we did it under Chavi at all uh, I don't think we did it under Coleman either in his um, in the second season. I think in the first season he did it was probably the last time we beat Villarreal and Zelda Vigo away uh, in his first season. Uh, after, of course, you know, 8-2 uh, and Messi leaving. So that's probably the last time we won uh, both of our two league games to start off with. Now, if you take a look at the top teams and who they'll be facing during the week, Atletico Madrid, back-to-back -back home games for them, will be hosting the pricks down the road in Espanyol. I keep forgetting they're in this league still, but they're sitting like at the bottom of the table, so hopefully they stay down there. And Madrid will be traveling to Las Palmas, which again, interesting trip for them as well. I see Atletico Madrid getting three points. Real Madrid, you never know. Again, it's an away game, but I still think they're going to get three points here as well. Of course, we play first, so we can put some good pressure on our title opponent. So hopefully that pressure will maybe increase the chances of them dropping points yet again. But nonetheless, though, good start for Barcelona. Six out of six. Of course, though, Atletico and Real just behind us by two points, along with our opponents, Rayo Vallecano. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Rio Vallecano. Of course, they've been a very strong team over the past few years. Of course, highlighting the fact that under Andre Ilaiola, who's now the board manager, and they got into uh, top half almost into European positions. Uh, I think it was two seasons ago, but since then they've kind of been, you know, a lower mid-table side since his departure. But they're still a very, very strong team nonetheless. Now, the last time we did face them was in the tailored end of last season. Uh, kind of in the honeymoon period for Xavi at this point where we did win 3-0 a Pedri brace and a very early goal from Robert Lewandowski. In terms of the players starting this game, of course, 1-2-3 of them are no longer at Barcelona in Roberto Gundogan and Joel Cancelo. Uh, the rest are still there and honestly, we could see a very similar team. Again, that back five apart from Cancelo is probably going to start. Uh, that front three is probably going to start again as well for men does maybe have a chance of starting so hopefully with the kind of similar team we can get a similar result as 
well. Now, if you take a look at Vallecano's last five matches in all competition, in their last match, they drew nil nil with Getafe. They beat Real Sociedad at the Anahueta on the opening day. They beat Wolves 1 0 in preseason. They lost to Bournemouth 1 0 in preseason. They even lost to Cordoba on penalties 4 2. Of course, we don't care whatsoever about preseason, but let's take a look at their first two games to open up the La Liga season. Firstly, is that huge 2 1 win against Real Sociedad? at the Anahuata. Again, the team is a European side in Sociedad. The stadium is, you can't get more difficult than that in La, in La Liga. And they went there on their opening day and got three massive points. They set up, of course, in the 4-4-2 formation. And I tell you what, I did watch this game and despite Sociedad's, you know, pressure and dominance on the ball, Vallecano were really, really good on the counter attack. Every time they went, every time they went through, it looked like they were going to score. They were very, very clinical as well. Every single action they did came with consequences in the fact that it was dangerous from the Sociedad point of view. You know, when they went uh, in one v one duels in defensive transition, when they're progressing the ball forward, they looked really good. I'm not gonna lie. Now I was watching that game thinking, bloody hell. I'll talk about who the you know their manager and the players are later on, but it's a team where. They can cause serious problems and they did this to a very good side and so in zones that in the stadium that they really lose it as well so big win for them on the opening day and of course the reason why they're right now sitting in the top half of the league now the last match in all competition of course was over the past weekend where they drew nil nil with getafe now honestly away from home nil nil against getafe not a bad result whatsoever of course that was our last start there last season as well when we opened up the league campaign um again who's really impressed me a lot for viacon in these two games is lejeune of course the center back formerly of newcastle and uh, alaves I believe he's had a very, very strong opening campaign. It's again, this team, it's, it's, it was still a 4 4 2. Uh, you had uh, Osco Trejo, who was playing uh, the half year as a 10, but he's playing more so in uh, kind of a false 9 position just behind the uh, striker uh, in Deca. But uh, yeah, it was a very uh, scrappy game. Neither team really had too many chances. Uh, of course, Borderlots on his side, we don't even want to talk about them. But I would say, honestly, a very, very strong point for Vallecano. So overall, final thoughts on Vallecano, a very, very sneaky, dangerous side who've had a very good start to the league campaign. They're very well managed by their manager, Inigo Perez. Of course, he came in in, I think, February of this year after the former manager was sacked. I uh, kept them up, of course. Uh, he did lose 3 nil to Barcelona in that game that we talked about, but he started off the season very, very well with his side. Now, in terms of players to look out for, of course, they have, you know, fantastic players in their arsenal. One of their summer signings, I believe, on loan uh, in Barba, who I think is coming in from Almeria, very, you know, experienced La Liga forward. Oscar Trejo, of course, their captain in the 10 or false 9. He's done very well. Uh, Espino at left back, of course, very experienced. I already mentioned Lejeune uh, in Teca up front. He had a very good start to the league last season, but he's kind of fallen off since. But you know what? A striker that has scored goals in the league and can, you know, cause some threats. It's a very, very experienced team, I would say. No, not filled with youngsters uh, per se, but again, a team that can get a result that can, you know, in a stadium that's going to be behind them, small pitch, you know, late, late night, they can definitely jam a result. And this is a team that has the experience to do that. So Barcelona has to be very, very careful and cautious in how they approach this game because Vallecano can be a very, very dangerous threat. Now, this would not be a transfer window match preview without a registration update. We do have some updates in regards to Denny Almost registration. Third time lucky. Let's wait and see. But this morning, Barcelona did officially announce and confirm the loan deals of Victor Roque, Turi Albetes, and Clement Longley to Atletico Madrid. Of course, Atletico Madrid and Betis confirmed these loans respectively as well. All the details that we already talked about in previous transfer videos have been confirmed essentially. Also, some big, big news is that Victor Roque, just about four minutes ago as I'm recording this video, has been registered by Barcelona in La Liga. Of course, it's a very positive move. That way, there is, you know, margin for Victor Roque to be registered. Of course, unregistering him will give us some, you know, FFP margin. Of course, Long Let's always already been registered, so him being unregistered is going to be key for us. But right now, in terms of tomorrow's match, it's going to be kicking off in just over 24 hour times for Denny Olmo. 
it is not looking good, bruv. Candice Air came out saying that even with the departures of Victor Roque, Clement Longley, and Mikal Faye, Barcelona do not have the required salary margin to register Denny Omo. I've been told by a good source that Barcelona still need around 5 to 7 million euros generated fair play margin in order to register Danny Olmo. So there's still a little bit left to go, but the fact there is a little bit left after, you know, three big departures is a concern. Fernando Polo and Monoportivo came out saying that Longle and Victor Roque have left to add to that Gundogan and Fai, but Barcelona needs more to register Danny Olmo. Barcelona currently negotiating with Whitebit to enter the business of Barca Vision. The Nike deal is also pending. I think Barcelona are optimistic to get that done before the transfer window ends, so we'll see on that. There's always the option of endorsement by Adrian Laporta and other board members. Now, look, I don't think Laporta is going to give up a bank guarantee at this point. You know, if... If he's going to give up a bank guarantee, he should have done it against Bilbao. I mean, doing it now against Vallecano, is there a purpose? If I'm Laporta, am I going to give up my own money, uh, knowing that we have deals coming up in the next few days? Probably not. The Conde one was different because Conde was, you know, I think very, very early August. We thought the whole transfer window left. We needed Conde to start off the league campaign. That's why him and the board gave that bank guarantee of 10 million euros. But now with any Omo, I see it as... What's the point? The transfer window ends this weekend. He's going to miss this game. If he misses, you know, Vidal at home, it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, I mean, it is. It looks bad on us, of course. No doubt about that. I'm pretty sure Danny Olmo will be very, very disappointed as well. And again, there is that clause in Danny Olmo's contract that if he's not registered by the end of the transfer window, he can leave for free. And even if he leaves for free, Barcelona will be paying his salary for the course of his contract. So it's going to be catastrophic, of course. It will not reach that point, but... Daniel Omo playing against Vallecano is looking very unlikely unless Barcelona can get a deal with um, White Bit to enter Barca Vision in the next 24 hours or get the Nike deal over the line in the next 24 hours. That would definitely would not happen, but the White Bit one might do, so we will see. But in regards to the departures for players like Eric Garcia, maybe Christensen, Rafinha, whoever it may be, those of course are not going to happen in the next 24 hours, which means that Daniel Omo ain't playing against Vallecano. He will not be registered in time, so that's... Uh, Game is game, so we'll see how that turns out, but no Denny Omo for Vallecano tomorrow night. Time now to get into the press conference reaction of Hansi Flick, who of course spoke to the media this morning, registration, the game ahead, and the transfer window, exits over the past few days, he gave all his thoughts and opinions, so let's get and see what Flick had to say this morning in the presser. We start off firstly, he was asked about Denny Omo's registration. He said, look, I always have hope. I'm hoping for him in the last game as well. It would be great to have him in tomorrow's match. These are things that neither the player nor the team can control. We talked about the situation. We know it's a difficult situation here in Barcelona. I believe in the club and I hope we can register him for tomorrow's game. Any player who can't play is obviously not happy, but he knows why it's like that. I'm sure that if he's in the list, that he will be 100% fit. So he's basically saying that, look, we hope he can play. He's 100% ready to go in terms of fitness and, you know, availability. So it's just now down to the club, essentially. He was then asked on what needs to improve following the two wins to start off the La Liga season. He said, look, I think I said in the last press conference, we are very satisfied with what the uh, team is doing on the pitch. The quality of training sessions is good. They are very focused. Very, uh, The intensity is good. And that can be seen in matches. If you only train at 80%, it's impossible to give 100% in matches. We analyze every match to improve the next match ahead. Then he's asked on the players who's left, saying that these are players who have left in the last few days. We need players to be able to play and to be competitive with the team. We are really going to try to manage to sign Danny Olmo. Of course, he means registered Danny Olmo. On Victor Roque's departure, he said that we can't say that I didn't count on Victor. Uh, that would be false. What I would say is what he told me. He came from Brazil. The situation is not the easiest for him. It's a good opportunity for him. He's a good person, and we hope that he can improve his performances. He's asking whether or not there'll be more signs coming in the transfer market. He said, look, I'm not thinking thinking about the possible arrivals. I'm concentrating on the players I have now. I'm really happy and content with the team. If there are changes or contributions that give more quality, okay, but I am fine with the players I currently have. On the objective of the team, saying the goal is always to win the league. It's a long road, but we've started well, but everything can change next week. We are very happy with our start and we're confident. We're not looking ahead to May, just looking ahead in the next game against Rayo Vallecano. 
as on the injured players and it's all started from the uh, euros and the copa america it happens to any big club we have to accept it because we can't change it there are no excuses we have a lot of players on the field and more on the bench and we can play the game then as on Fermin Lopez and Fermin Lopez had a few days of rest and he's been very important for him after his uh, two championships now he's here he's good and we have a team he showed that he uh he showed that in the last few matches we are very happy with his contribution and his mentality then as of course on the two games left ahead of the September international break he said the goal is to win the games uh, now we're focused on the Viacano and we're going to go step by step this is how we are going to manage the situation and finally he was asked on the talents of La Masia saying that I'm it's surprised how young players are in the first division it's always happens in Germany but not you know three 17 year olds in the same team we have analyzed Barcelona B and yesterday I also went to go see their match uh, it was great to see the level that they are playing but the foundation is always very strong and that included Hansi Flick's press conference reaction head of the match against Rayo Vallecano tomorrow let's now get into the lineup prediction we're gonna start with the manager of course Hansi Flick I'm gonna try my best to predict this lineup of course I had a very 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 strong success rate with Chavi last season like over 90% but I'm still trying to read Hansi Flick so I'm gonna be predicting the exact same team that he started the match against Athletic Club which of course is Ter Stegen in goal a back four of Kunde, Kubarsi, Inigo Martinez and Alejandro Balde double pivot of Mark Bernal and Pedri with Rafinha in the 10, Lamin Yamal on the right, Fernand Torres on the left and Lewandowski up front. I could see definitely Casado coming back in this team but who drops out? I don't know. Could there be a change in the back line? Maybe Eric Garcia starts. Apart from that, I don't think so. Again, he could start Eric Garcia right back and rest Kunde. He could play him at center back. Uh, whatever the case may be. Apart from those two changes, I don't see much. I think the um, the front four is pretty concrete. I Unless he wants to drop uh, Ferran and put maybe Fermin on the left. Or maybe move Rafa to the wide left and then have Fermin in the 10. I think that's probably what he wants to do when he gets Denny almost. So you want to kind of, you know, get the team ready for the Denny almost arrival and you know drop Fran but Fran kind of play pretty all right against build mouse so this will be I think this lineup will be a good indication on what Hansi Flick not only thinks of this team but also of the players as well so I'm going to be predicting the same lineup but I think there will be a change or two but what those changes will be will be a very very interesting tell but this is the thing that Hansi Flick will select for this match but of course in the comments down below let me know what you think Hansi Flick will go with now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was the Barcelona coach, and I have made one change from my lineup prediction for Hansi Flick, and I have made the change of bringing in Casado for Ferran Torres, so going back to the basic, but of course advancing Pedri to the number 10 position instead of playing that bit of a deeper role. I think this team would absolutely cook against Vallecano. I was thinking about dropping Kuborsi. For uh, Eric Garcia, but I'm like, you know what, Kaborsi, third time, hopefully you perform. That's pretty much all I'm asking for. But back five, there's really no changes I was looking for. Midfield, again, you could maybe make some tweets. Again, in the 10, you could maybe play Fermin Lopez. You may want to think about bringing in Pablo Torre as well. But I think this team, you have balance, stability. You have the threat of the wide men. You have Rafinha that can cut inside, create danger in the open space. Of course, uh, Limini Amal to hold the width. You have Baldi, of course, down that left flank. That hopefully going in the attack and putting in some decent crosses this time. This team is very balanced in my opinion and this team I think would definitely get the job done against Vallecano and also of course you have the options off the bench as well you know Ferran Torres coming into the game or Pablo Torre or whoever uh, Fermin Lopez of course so uh, I think this team is the team that I really want to see and the team that I'm really looking forward to hopefully Hansa Fick selecting for this game and I think this team just screams control, savability, composure and hopefully some freaking goals and that's a lot that i was like for this match but of course in the comments down below let me know if you rather pick my lineup or flicks lineup time now for my score prediction what do i believe the result will be in this match now if you're active in the comment sections you already knew i was going to predict the draw i predicted the draw against uh, valencia and bilbao and we won both games so i'm keeping the streak going of course we have two what two losses and one draw in our last three games to the vallejo so Predicting a win, I think, is quite ballsy. I would say, again, now you're having uh, games coming thick and fast, at almost a 72-hour, uh, just over 72-hour turnover. Look, I, if this was at home, I'd be way, 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 way more confident. I probably would have predicted a win. I would have said, screw the comment section, and I probably would have predicted a win. With this, but this being away from home, I think we have a difficult task ahead. Um, 
I think a draw would be a you know, negative result, especially with our strong start to the league campaign. Of course, a loss would be absolutely catastrophic and a win would be over the moon. But I think, you know, with the record that Barcelona has, with the start that Vallecano have and them being at home, I think this is quite an even affair. I would say there's a higher chance that Barcelona win this game than Vallecano, but I think a draw is written all over this game for sure. But hopefully, I am wrong for the third time in a row but this is my score prediction for the match tomorrow but of course in the comments down below let me know what you think the score line will be so that was my match preview for Rayo Vallecano versus Barcelona in La Liga hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did of course make sure you leave a like and leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed the main thing I want to know of course is your score prediction and secondly on those lineups firstly would you rather pick my lineup or Flick's lineup, what do you think Flick will go with? What would you go with? You're the manager. Let me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Set the reminder on the screen and come and join me. Watch the game with me. Follow track of the match by my match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're going to make it hopefully nine out of nine points to start off this league campaign. Take care and force a Barca. Oh,